Okay, so the Theological Dictionary of the New Testament by Kittle, um, some of the actual, some of the ones actually say like compiled by other um, people, like for example this index volume says compiled by Ronald E. Pitkin, but as far as I know it's always, most people call it the, the Kittle's Dictionary, so um, the Theological Dictionary of the New Testament by Kittle here I wanted to show you the index volume. Whenever you buy a book, one of the first things I recommend doing is opening to the index. Like, you always want to know what's in the index. That's going to help you. Um, so this particular Theological Dictionary of the New Testament by Gerard Kittle, you go to the front here, and it says, Indices of the Theological Dictionary of the New Testament. So then I open up, and it says, Index of English keywords and it's going to show you where these keywords are mentioned inside of his dictionary here he created so you might be looking for like a particular um subject like let me just pick one out real quick i've been interested in reading about um melchizedek maybe so I, that's not particularly that might not be considered a, a english word in oh that look so melchizedek right there and it's going to be in volume 4, pages 568 to 571. So I can go to my um, volume 4 and open up to that page that he said. And I'm going to read about Melchizedek. Um, you know, so that was a shortcut. Now I don't have to read through all of the volumes, which would be next to impossible, right? At least to do thorough research to find Melchizedek. I can go to my index and look up that word. So then there's another section, Index of Biblical References. So Biblical References, it starts in Genesis and naturally is going to go to Revelation. And the reason you'll find that in the Greek um, dictionary like this is that it's going to probably be referencing the Septuagint. Um, and the Septuagint was the Greek um, translation that was done under the Ptolemies in Egypt. So... All right, here's all the biblical references. There's Jeremiah. It started at Genesis. It's going to go through. Oh, there's some apocryphal, the apocryphal books. Then I go to the end, and that's most of the, um, that occupies most of the space in the index volume since it is a Greek, um, it's a Greek book. It's a Greek set of um, dictionaries. So index of biblical references is on the Bible, so naturally it's going to show you where all of the different um, all the different references to the Bible. So I'm just saying that that makes sense. So it's going to show you, like Genesis 1, it's going to show you all of the places in the Bible that talk about, are in the dictionary, that talk about Genesis 1. So I'd go to my second volume page 392, or I'd go to my third volume, page 1009, I'd go to 1010 through 1015, all those are going to be talking, are going to have references to Genesis 1. So, moving on, it says, contributors and co-workers. So maybe I have an author that I know about, and I wanted to know if he contributed to um, this particular set of dictionaries. I can look in here and I'll find and see if maybe that my favorite contributor contributed to this. Oh, there's um, Kittle. Kittle hopefully contributed to it, right? It's a, this was written by him. So, um, and then moving on, it says contributors and co-workers. So, um, it says contributors and, oh, sorry, I was on that one. Prehistory of the Theological Dictionary of the New Testament. So it tells you about the workup to the, um, and how they came about even making this work here that they wanted to make. So I wanted to read to you a little um, quote in the back by Gerard Frederick. Um, he says, Every age has its own methods and seeks its own forms. Thus, Lexi, uh, Lexi, Lexicography, like other disciplines, 
even when they have done what they set out to do, is never at its goal, but always on the way to new insights. H. Tickton begins his essay on dictionaries of the future with the, with the words, All human work is imperfect. Dictionaries are incontestably among the most imperfect of human products. Those who are driven by calling or circumstances to seek help in lexical works should realize how inadequate is that which even the best and most comprehensive of dictionaries can offer the user. So whenever you're looking through all these dictionaries, you're, you're never going to find a perfect work. Like you go to um, the Noah Webster 1828, it's just a definition that he tried to put together. I mean, like, think of all the wordsmiths that have been out there. People who can say things better than other people. You're never going to find a perfect dictionary. They don't exist. There's never a perfect encyclopedia. It doesn't exist. So, um, even when people put their hands to the Bible, you know, they made certain corruptions that um, you have to learn to be able to distinguish and look through just to, hey, is there... Any human perfect that's gonna human work that's gonna be perfect, no. So, um, I hope that that helps to learn a little bit about the index and just how to navigate your way through these the set of theological dictionary of the New Testament by Kittle. And I hope that the extra comments maybe that I made will help you understand some other things better too. So, all right, I hope that helps. <laughs> Have a good one. Take it easy, y'all. Bye. Yeah.